Welcome to Magic Arcanum, I'm Ryan Gomez. Behind the scenes is Nicole Burdick, and we're so glad you're here because it's story time. I recently told you all about what happens in Streets of New Capenna, and the comments on that video revealed two common questions among viewers. Number one, what did Urobrask actually do there? Hmm, he gets mentioned in the main story, but then kind of vanishes from the plot, so I understand the confusion. His adventures, if you want to call them that, are actually part of one of the five side stories, which I will cover really soon in a future video, so make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss that. Question number two is, so what's the deal with Elspeth? Is she an angel? That's the one we're going to tackle here today. But first, let me thank Into the AM for sponsoring this episode and for providing me with the inspiration to go after the biggest questions in magic. Every day I am excited to put on one of these super comfortable graphic t-shirts, ranging from minimalist to psychedelic, there's definitely something in the lineup to match your style, or to match the theme of your next commander deck. Hey, don't forget, Mother's Day and Father's Day are coming up. Yeah, get mom one of their comfy basic hoodies, and she'll feel like you're giving her a nice warm hug every time she puts it on. And dad, shoot, he'll look great in a lightweight bomber jacket, the perfect outerwear for mowing the lawn, tending the grill, watching the ball game, and other fatherly activities. Save 10% site-wide when you use my promo code, Magic Arcanum, at checkout, or just use the link down in the description. Either way, you're supporting the show while refreshing your wardrobe and making your parents happy. So check out Into the AM today and tell them the bald guy sent you. All right, now let's talk about angels. At the conclusion of the New Capenna story, it is implied Elspeth is an angel, mostly because she radiates a soft glow of light and can hear the angel song coming from the other angels of the plane while they are still in stasis. This is further supported by her newest card, which creates angel tokens. All previous versions of Elspeth created soldier tokens, or in one case actually found a specific soldier card in your deck. And one of the major themes of Streets of New Capenna is family. Elspeth comes to the plane to investigate if it is indeed her birthplace, and during that story, she feels a strong connection to the angel statues she encounters there. So let's talk about those statues, because they make, like, no sense. We are told that long ago, the demons of the plane betrayed the angels and placed them into a sort of stasis so that they could harvest their magical energy in the form of Halo. Now, does this mean each angel just was frozen in place where they stood, like they just turned to stone, as if they were looked upon by a gorgon? At one point in the story, Elspeth encounters a statue of an angel in mid-fight against what she recognizes as a Phyrexian. Okay, okay, so this angel is defending humanity and suddenly this demon spell freezes her in mid-battle. Did it also freeze the Phyrexian? Nothing says that it did. So did someone find this angel and then sculpt a new Phyrexian for it to be fighting? And what about the angel statues in the cathedral at the end of the story? Were they all perched in that building when the spell hit? Or did somebody move them there after they were all frozen elsewhere? Kinda creepy, if you ask me. We were also told that Xander collected statues for study and placed them in his personal archives, which were always kept locked. So when the story ends and Jada's magic unfreezes the angels, what happened to the ones in Xander's vault? Were they stuck in there for days, pounding on the hidden door until Anhalo located the key on Xander's corpse and managed to get them out? That must have been an awkward conversation for him, huh? 
Majestic Metamorphosis is a blue card that tells us the angels are within the statues. So maybe they didn't become solid stone, they just had a hard candy shell that melts in your mouth and not in your hand. Also, I find it funny that this card turns your artifact into an angel, but only until the end of the turn, then it has to go right back into the statue, instead of, I don't know, an enchantment that turns your artifact into a creature permanently? Anyway, we know for a fact that the plane had angels in the past, and they were somehow frozen in place as statues, and are now returning to normal. But where does Elspeth fit in that? Is it possible she herself is an angel too? I know this is a fantasy card game, and the lore behind some things is often deliberately left vague in order for writers to have some wiggle room, but even so, there are some things we know for certain. In magic, it has been established that angels are usually beings composed of pure mana. Some dabble in artifice, or are constructs, or were created by Nicol Bolas to act as enforcers, but in the majority of cases, angels are noble creatures that protect their worshippers. On Dominaria, for example, we have the famous Sarah Angels, named after the planeswalker Sarah, who herself was not an angel, but these iconic creatures are the souls of fallen warriors, reborn as divine beings of pure mana. Now, the Fallen Empire's version of Goblin War Drums tells us that these angels can die and leave behind a skull, which makes for a great sounding drum, but we also know that the angel will eventually rise again and remember its past lives. This seems to be true from plane to plane. Innistrad has a well-documented history with angels. Some were born on the plane naturally during the so-called dawn times, when the plane first came together in whatever process gives birth to new planes. Avacyn was a special case created by Sorin to serve a specific role in protecting the humans of Innistrad from the plane's darkest terrors. That's why, when she was ultimately unmade, it was implied we would never see her again. But compare that to Lysa, who was destroyed by Avacyn some thousand years ago, only to eventually reform herself in answer to the prayers of a desperate woman during the Eternal Night. Which brings me back to Elspeth, because we don't know anything about the circumstances of her birth. We don't know if she had parents, or just popped into creation one day. We do know she was tortured at the hands of the Phyrexians until her spark ignited and she underwent her first random planeswalk, which took her to Theros. People love to try to correct me and say she went to Bant, but that came later, even though that is where we got her first card. Anyway, assuming Elspeth was born as an angel, she'd be the first one in known magic history to have a spark which we've previously been told is unique to mortal creatures. Then we are still left wondering why the demon's stasis spell didn't affect her. And for that, we have to conclude it's because she was simply beyond its range. The recently published Planeswalker's Guide article gives us a bit more detail in how New Capenna was constructed. Basically, it is one massive, towering city, a sort of arc for humanity on a plane besieged by the Phyrexians. But that means there is still land outside of that, where pockets of humans still lived, and this is likely where Elspeth was held as a prisoner, which would allow her to skip being frozen, since the demons probably only focused on the angels within the city limits. It also explains why some Phyrexians would still be around after being defeated by the Halo-powered demons. They just secured the city, not the surrounding areas. Alright, so Elspeth is an angel with a spark. Unique, but not impossible, I guess. Then, she eventually ends up on Theros, where she dies at the hands of Heliod, one of the plane's gods. As I stated earlier, traditionally when an angel dies, they sort of dissolve back into raw mana and can reform themselves into a solid creature, but it takes time and or prayers for that to happen. Elspeth's journey, as we know, is nothing like that. This could be thanks to the unique arrangement of the underworld on Theros, 
or the presence of Erebos and the other gods. But her death and her life follow the path of any other known mortal, including things like falling in love with Daxos, which blurs the lines again. Can angels have romantic relations with non-angels? Maybe everywhere but certain countries, if you know what I mean. Anyway, uh, Elspeth also has no wings of her own, but curiously, those older Planeswalker cards I mentioned, the ones who make soldier tokens, she could also usually make those fly. So I can see it both ways. Maybe Elspeth was born an angel on a plane where they were somewhat common. For some reason, she didn't have wings like her siblings and wound up tortured at the hands of the Phyrexians. This ignited her spark, which is another oddity, and set her on a path that would include more battles against the Phyrexians and falling in love with a human and being struck down by a god. Ultimately, she returns to her home plane and meets another mysterious angel, and together they break their family members out of captivity and usher in a new era for new Capenna. Or, or option B, the writers just said, wouldn't it be cool if she was like, always an angel, man? So which is it? Do the angels of New Capenna make sense? Is Elspeth really one of them? Let me know what you think down in the comments, and while you're there, check out that link for Into the AM and save yourself 10%. No Planeswalker emblem needed. Then make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the great stories you'll only find here on Magic Arcanum. We'll see ya.